slavery is as old as human civilization, dating back to the ages of the pharaohs and beyond. It even exists today in some places. Every culture around the world has practiced slavery in form or the other, be it as servitude, serfdom, debt repayment, or collective peasantry. When slave trade is mentioned, people usually think of the African slave trade domineered by the European colonial powers in the 18th century. However, 60 years before the American Civil War, the American Marines fought major wars with the Barbary Corsairs to put an end to the white slave trade. The Barbary Corsairs hailing from the Berber coast, stretching from western Morocco to modern-day Libya, were a series of fanatical Islamic pirate city-states which attacked and raided the coastal northern Mediterranean, terrorizing Portugal, Spain, France, Sicily, Italy, the Balkans, as well as Britain. They raided coastal villages and even inland settlements, as well as merchant vessels, and kidnapped people in their feverish search for slaves for their own pleasures, as well as the tribute to their Ottoman overlords ruling from the Sultanate in Constantinople. The Ottoman Empire is one of the largest and longest-running empires in history, spanning 623 years from 1299 to 1922, and three continents including the Balkans in southeastern Europe, Arabia, and Central Asia, and coastal Northern Africa. Like many great empires that came before it, the Ottoman Empire was based on slavery. But unlike most examples of slavery, in the Ottoman Empire, slaves were white. The Ottoman society was highly hierarchical and based on social status. It is a rule in Islam that fellow Muslims cannot be held as slave, but there were no such rules upon non-Muslim slaves which led to vast capture of European Christian slaves and prisoners of war during the centuries of religious strife. Many experts have estimated the volume of the slave trade from African Berbers to the Ottoman Empire at a number of approximately 16,000 to 18,000 men and women who were being transported into the empire per annum. This gives an average estimation of 7.5 million captured slaves sent to the Ottoman Empire in the four centuries of its dominion over the Eastern Mediterranean. This estimate does not include the large number of exploited Christians the Ottoman captured from the wars in Europe and the occupation of the Balkans. In fact, it was estimated that 20% of the residents during the 16th century were slaves. The Ottomans tied their economy tightly to owning slaves. Since it was a large country, the vast work they needed required more workers. For this reason, they needed slaves to help them with different tasks. The law allowed the Sultan to take one-fifth of the spoils his soldiers won in battle. While the spoils usually meant material things, the Sultan considered human captives as part of the spoils. The Sultan made an elite corps of slave soldiers out of these captives. They would later become infamous as the Janissaries and were feared throughout the European coasts as one of the most elite forces ever seen in. White slaves were used in a variety of roles, including as household servants, concubines, laborers, and soldiers. A typical day in the life of a white slave in the Ottoman Empire was filled with hard work, abuse, and uncertainty. For many, the day began before dawn, as they were expected to awaken before their owners and set to work in the fields, the household, or in workshops. White slaves who worked as household servants often had to clean, cook, and perform other menial tasks for their owners and their families. Those who were used as laborers or soldiers might spend their days in grueling physical labor, building roads, bridges, or fortifications, or fighting in battles alongside their Ottoman masters. Life for white slaves in the Ottoman Empire was often marked by violence and abuse. Owners were known to beat, torture, and rape their slaves, and white slaves had few legal protections or recourse against their owners. Some owners even castrated their male slaves to turn them into eunuchs, who were highly valued as servants and guards in the Ottoman court. Despite the harsh conditions they faced, some white slaves in the Ottoman Empire were able to find a measure of freedom. Some slaves in noble households were granted liberty by their owners as a reward for loyal service and were either incorporated into the family household in the form of adoption or marriage or received a pension for the rest of their lives. 
Others were able to escape and find refuge in nearby Christian communities, where they might be welcomed and protected from their former owners. The harems mentioned in literature and pop culture give us an image of well-dressed, beautiful women adorned with rice fabrics and jewelry serving the man owning the harem. The harems were the female living quarters in the households of the richest landowners and nobles who could afford to hold and adorn that many wives, concubines, and female slaves. However, such an ideal life was not available to all the female slaves in the Ottoman Empire. In many places throughout the Ottoman Empire, the number of female slaves was a matter of social status. This led to people who did not have the same kind of monetary means to hold a harem into still purchasing a number of female slaves to serve the household. In most of such households, the female slaves were provided with minimal or no clothing and sometimes had to live naked around the house even in presence of guests. While the harems provided security and a comfortable life even in servitude, this was the dark side of the female slave trade in the Ottoman Empire mirrored by discomfort and sexual abuse. The imperial harem also known as the Palace of the Girls was the harem serving the ruling sultan of the empire. The majority of the members of the imperial harem were slaves. Slave girls from every part of the empire were sent to the imperial harem as gifts to the sultan if they were considered as beautiful or talented enough. The girls were educated in Turkish language, court etiquette, Islamic laws, and the traditional customs of the harem. The imperial harem was a social struggle among the numerous concubines to become the sultan's favorite and receive his grace. The imperial harem also employed a number of male slaves for efficient functioning, with extra precautionary measures. Besides the sultan, the only men to enter the harem were Inuch. The Unich were an imperial slave class important for the security and subterfuge in the royal courts, as well as the Sultan's harem. The castration method used left them unlikely to ever form any kind of relationship with women and were thus deployed in the harem to ensure its smooth operation with carrying out cleaning, serving and aiding the female members of the harem with their daily needs. The legacy of white slavery in the Ottoman Empire contributed to the wealth and power of the Sultanate at its peak. Slavery in the Ottoman Empire was significantly different from other slave trades. The slaves were rather well treated by the noble families and royal households. On the other hand, the slaves in the army and in poorer households faced huge adversity and uncertainty of life. Stay tuned to find out more about the brutal truths behind the largest empires in history. Bringing the struggles of the people of yore into light. This is Time Capsule. Please like, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out. Thank you for watching. See you again next time on Time Capsule.